Y'all get tired of it? No. I get it twice a week, and I don't get tired of it. Maybe that's what I was going to tell you. Uh, you, been, you guys know about, what, maybe five years ago or something, we helped him get his cowboy church going to Eddieville, Kentucky. And uh, it's been going, you know, been going, been going. It kind of been going there lately, been going back down there, I don't know, what, six weeks or so or what. So, I don't know, it's been supposed to be going down there. Jeff goes down there and plays music for him. It's been good. It's never really taken off, but it's been good. And so, uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, as, of, uh, as of this week, I guess I'm taking the reins on that deal. So we're going to go over to Eddieville, Kentucky, and we're going to get it on. Oh. You all don't know where this is. Come on and go. Exit 40. Off 24. Tuesday nights. Tuesday night, so let's get down there and scoop them. <laughs> uh, you know, there's power numbers. There's power numbers, I believe it. Everybody says so. You know, they say you know, it ain't about numbers, and it ain't, but it is. Everybody good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, gosh. I'm just going to keep on keeping right on, so... Uh, you know, we've been on the deal lately. I don't even know how long now, and I don't know how long it'll just be from now on, probably. But, you know, really our theme has been uh, love, unconditional love of God, of course, but it's like the theme of uh, love's not something you do. Love's not something you do. Love's something you receive. And however you receive it is how you do it. And so we focused on what we do and religion pounds you about what you do, when really if we'd have just got clear about what we receive and believe, doing would just be natural, right? So that's what we've been hitting on. If we receive and believe right about how He's loving us, then that same kind of love comes out of us. And so our performance and our behavior is just fruit of that which we believe. So quit worrying about managing fruit and producing fruit that you ain't got any uh, control over anyway and just start lining up with Him. You just start getting with Him, spending time with Him, understanding that His love is unconditional. It's not based on your performance. It's not based on your Sunday school attendance. It ain't based on your tithing record. It ain't based on... Uh... You want me to keep going? <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to get the CDs. Alright? So anyway, there's been going on and on and on about that, talking about uh, love and the power of love. And we talked about, you know, the kingdom of God. How that there is a, a place, uh, a place that's the kingdom of God, the, the the place. But there's also, you know, a lot of times he talks about the kingdom of God being uh, the system. A kingdom is a form of government type of government. We live in democracy. We don't really understand kingdom, but like Great Britain, it's a kingdom. Uh, it's a form of government. It's a type of government. And I, I believe, me personally, that a lot of the time Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about the type of government, the system that runs heaven. And so I showed you a few weeks back. We didn't just get the CDs on. Try not to get stuck on it and read recap everything for very long, but the kingdom of God, the system that runs heaven, is love. Amen. And so when you when you get that and you start reading some of that stuff about the kingdom of God and you and you uh, use love in that place, it makes a whole lot more sense. And so we just talked about love. Last week we finally got to um, the way you receive love is the way you give love. And so we got last week we got finally got down to uh, forgiveness, that love does not take into account a wrong suffer. Love does not take into account a wrong suffer. Love forgives. And so however you, in the same way, that however you believe you're forgiven is also the way that you're able to forgive. And so we thought we were forgiven partially, we forgave partially, or we thought we earned forgiveness, or we had to confess, or we had this or that to give forgiveness then the same thing was required for me to forgive. When I believe. But when I realized that I'm totally forgiven and that it's a finished work, that I, I'm forgiven. I'm so forgiven that I don't even have to be forgiven-minded. Right. Right. 
it's all right to think I'm forgiven and sing this song, but it comes a point in time where I'm so forgiven, I don't even know what forgiven is anymore. Amen. Oh, some of you will get that. But I'm saying this now. I talked about, you know, forgiving people because it frees you up, not because they want it or deserve it or even know they need it. It's not about them. It's about you. When you carry unforgiveness on your heart, it will affect everything that you touch in life. And so we realize when He's forgiven us freely and totally and completely forever for all more, that, that love, unconditional love does not take into account the suffered, that there's no sin on your record, then you can start being free to forgive that way. Because that even when I still mess up, you know what he says? He just don't understand yet. He doesn't have a full revelation of what love is yet. He's coming. See, understanding brings understanding. And so when someone doesn't act completely in the fullness of love and they've hurt you or done something or this, you just understand. I understand where they are. They didn't wake up this morning and decide to be evil. Just... So understanding, when I understand how it is that I'm forgiven and that there's no sin on my record and that I'm completely forgiven, I can start forgiving that way. And so that's what we talk about, setting people free so that they're not just set free, you're set free, and that doesn't operate in you. And so we can talk about uh, we believe wrong about God and blame God for things and wrong believing. And so, you know, not that he, not that he's been wrong, but... But we've believed wrong, and so we've blamed God, and we've had unforgiveness for God. And that makes it hard to trust Him. So, all that being said, I, I've been, I've been, uh, I, I usually try to take Thursday afternoons and just get off by myself and, and just, just be quiet and, and spend time on Him, and so. You know, here's you know, I started off this whole deal with Dean's story. You know, I'll tell it again because I, some people weren't here, but and I never get tired of telling it because it's affected me. But you know, he talked about the coffee, and if you're tired of hearing about it, too bad. <laughs> he talked about the coffee, and he you you know loves coffee and usually gets coffee wherever, and it don't cost very much. But he ended up someplace where he had to pay way too much for coffee, and it's like super expensive and like. You know, bought the coffee anyway because he really wanted it, you know. And the, then the Lord said, you, you paid a lot for that coffee, didn't you? You really wanted that coffee, didn't you? That, that coffee was worth more to you than the price you had to pay or you wouldn't have paid. You just stuck your money back in your pocket. But since the coffee had more value to you than the price, you, you paid the payment and made the deal. You traded because you placed more value on the coffee than you did the payment. Well, in the same way that he made the payment, he paid the price for the coffee, which was me, which was you. And so I'm thinking, you, you gotta, you got to get this because that's saying that he places how, how much value he places on you. How much, how much you're worth. Because he said, I, I, I'm telling you, it, makes, it gets to me because I'm thinking, you know what, when he paid the price for me, I wasn't even drinkable. He, he paid the price. He paid the payment with the hope of the chance that I might become a Christian. Preach it on. For the hope of a chance that I might become, just the hope of my value caused him to pay the payment. The, the payment. We know what the payment was. The payment was Jesus. In essence, really, it was himself. He, he placed more value on me. You can make it personal if you want to. I'm making it personal. He placed more value and more worth on me than he did his own self. I wish somebody wrapped their mind around that so I could just go on. There ain't nobody can wrap their mind around <laughs> that. Just roll it. Hang on. You can't wrap your mind around it. There's I don't no even have time or the vocabulary to tell you who God really is and what I mean, God's really like and what He's able to make really and who He is and what He is. Really what he is. Like, he's undescribable. But that guy decided that I was worth more than he was. Individually. That's just nuts. Or even Mark. Put it right now. <laughs> Well, what I'm saying is, we've been spending time, so so I kind of argued with him about this all afternoon. I, I wouldn't say argue, but we discussed it, you know, because 
Because here's what love does. Now that I've come to this conclusion, now that I've got, now that we're getting this, we're close, you know. He, he's shown me his heart. And all this stuff that I used to believe is out of our way. And now we can be close. We can be intimate. We're, we're buddies. I mean, I'm his favorite boy. And, and you know, we spend time together and I like it. And so, uh, you know, here, here we are. I say, you know what? You, know, you guys know what I preach. You know what I believe. I say it's all about him. It's all about Him, right? And I say, there ain't no use us spending any time worrying about you and what we're doing and what we got going on. It's all about Him and just knowing Him and, and, and understanding Him and, and receiving from Him and getting revelation of Him. That's what changes us, right? It's all about Him. It's all about Him. And then in turn, He says, no, no, no. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. I paid the price for you. You're worth more to me. You're valuable to me. I, I'm, I've done what I've done so that your wildest dreams can come true. That you can reach your destiny. That you can fulfill your dreams. It's all about you, son. It's all about you. I say, no, no, it's all about you. I don't want it to be about me. He said, it's about you. I said, no, it's about you. No, it's about you. Oh, it's about you. <laughs> you see what we got going on? <laughs> I like it. So I'm thinking, all, all this, you know, all we've been talking about lately and all this, I'm thinking, I, I, I'm, I'm treading on my water here because because you, you, you're, you're showing yourself to us so much that, that you're saying it's about us. I don't want to talk about us. He said, I, I said, it's about you. I want to talk about you. He said, no, it's about you. I want you to talk about you. I didn't want to, but I'm going to talk about you just a little bit, all right? Just because he said it's about you, and, and you can't get revelation of him and it not affect you. So I just want to shed a little bit of light on it because here's what I, I've learned this. When religious folk criticize you, it's really a compliment. The things they say about me in criticism, I think. Well, thanks. <laughs> That's what they want, you know. They'll, they'll say, you're just talking about all this good stuff of God and how God's good and, and this. You're just talking about receiving and getting this. It's almost like selfish. And what about all the suffering and all the uh, sacrifice and all this stuff? I'm like, you, I'm, let me tell you this. You've got nothing until you receive it from God. You've got nothing. If he wants to get it to people, he's going to get it through you. I'm going to tell you what you are, you're a funnel. And if you want to give something, you, see, you, you, you've got nothing to give him until you receive it from him. Whatever you receive from him, I'm going to give you double. I'm going to give it to somebody else. Huh? Hey, hey I, you know, I don't talk about it all that much, but you want to talk about money? Hey, give me a whole bunch of it. I'm going to share it. You're good enough to do something he, if he wants to give Jesus it to somebody, he's going to give it to a giver. That's true. Uh, I, we don't, it can it be every aspect of everything. The, I mean, love, forgiveness, all of it. All of it. But here's, here's what I'm talking about. We've talked about all of that. All of that coming in you and going out of you. But here, here's what... Let me read you something here real quick. Let me read you something. This is Matthew 13, 44. Matthew 13, 44. Listen to this. I never understood these really like I understand them now. Matthew 13, 44. This is Jesus talking. It's written in red. Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven. Remember? The system. You might as well just, you could put love there without doing injustice. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. What's a field? What's a field? <laughs> all right. Time out. I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. I'm talking about you and, and your worth and, and uh, what you're worth. Because here's the thing about giving it. We talked about forgiveness last week, and I had this conversation with lots of people since then. And, and so we talked about giving love, giving this, giving that. First, receive it. You got to receive. You got to receive. You got to receive. You know, you're saying, "Ah, oh, you're just talking about selfish. You're talking about just how to get stuff from God." But I'm telling you, it's God's heart to get all that He can get to you, and get all the good that He can get to you. It said, "The goodness of God is what what brings man to repentance." And you know what I've said about repentance. It's a change. It's 
It's, if He's going to bring about change in me, it's going to come by Him pouring goodness on me. And when I see Him, and when I see how good He is, and when He blesses me, that's what brings about change. And so if I was God and I knew that, and the more good I got on you, the more change was brought about, I wonder what my idea would be. Oh, well, I'd want to get all the good I could get on you, wouldn't I? But if I was the devil, I'd probably come up with some kind of religious system to get you to try to qualify for it all the time and get you earning it so you'd always be disqualified and you'd say, nah, I'm not, I've not got my performance there yet. I'm not qualified for that. I better not. Well, just only so much. I said, I, I, I got told this. I got told this last week. Ah, you just got too big of a picture of God. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Serious. I said, man, I'm just getting started. You ain't seen this. <laughs> hey. I didn't mean it for criticism, but I took it as a compliment. I told him so. <laughs> I said, you, if you don't like me now, you, should, you sure ain't going to like me in five years from now because I've been like, I'll plumb out of the box. <laughs> if you get too close to me, you're going to be uncomfortable all the time. <laughs> Get me off track. Here. <laughs> I'm talking about receiving for yourself. For yourself. We talked about forgiveness and forgiving other people. You know, you know who the hardest person to forgive is a lot of times. Uh oh. Self. Hey, you know I believe in healing. I see people heal. Almost daily. You know sometimes the hardest person to get healed? Yourself. And I believe why is because we have not really realized our value and our worth and how much we're getting from We've got we've got unforgiveness for ourselves so deep that we don't even know it's there, that it's subconscious. It's a cousin to condemnation. And it's so deep that we don't even realize that it's there. We say up here, I believe in healing. I believe what Jason says every week. I believe that and I'll, I'll ask him to pray for me and I'll, and I'll, I'll want it. I'll, hey, pray for me. I want healed. I'm healed. I'll do all. I'll go through all the motions of all that. But down here there's something so deep that we don't even realize it's there. And all the time it's saying no. Self-punish myself. I des I des I know everybody else deserves it. Yeah, Lord, give me enough of it that I can share it with everybody else. Change me there. But not so much in me because I deserve this. Because I know in me. Hey, I can lay hands on somebody else and get them healed that fast. Take me some time. Why? I know me. Jason just a guy. See, you all see Jason here. You think he's something. He ain't. No different than nobody else. You know, if you know me before and you know me now, the only difference in me now, I come to the point where I decided I'm going to believe what he said over anything else. Whatever he right. said, see he said. What he said. I got to get to that place. I decided that what he said about me is more true than what I said about me. Amen. What he said about me is more true than what anybody else can say about I'll me believe. or circumstances can say or whatever else. I don't care what it is. I decided to believe what he says. Whatever he says about it is the way it is in my book. And, and then I said, Lord, and you know where I'm at and I'm not all the way there yet, so you do whatever it takes to get me there. And you talk about an exciting place to live. It might make you squirm sometimes, but it, it's all right. But I'm telling you, you got to receive for yourself. And you can say, well, that's selfish, all this stuff. But I'm telling you, the only thing you got to do is what you receive for yourself. So quit disqualifying yourself. Go on and forgive yourself. You've heard me read over and over Romans 5, right? Because of one man's offense. Because of one man's offense, many were made sinners. Because of Adam, you were born a sinner. We thought, well, I've sinned, so I'm a sinner. You didn't become a sinner because you sinned. 
you've sinned because you were born a sinner. You see the difference? Is that clear? You're not a sinner because of your actions. You're a sinner because of Adam's actions. You were born in Adam. You were born a sinner, and that's why you sinned. Rocket science, ain't it? Huh? And so in the same way, through one man's disobedience, many were led to death. One man's obedience, many were made righteous. You didn't have anything to do with being a sinner. You didn't have anything to do with being righteous. You can go ahead and forgive yourself, let yourself off the hook, and live in the good things of God. Go ahead and receive. Go ahead and receive. You, you're no longer guilty. You no longer have to blame yourself. You no longer have to live with what they did or what they said or what they did to you or said to you or didn't do to you or what you have, whoever you was born in. Your daddy had this or your daddy did that or your mama had that or your mama had that. Well, guess what? If you've been born again, that line is cut off. You no longer have that blood coming in your veins. You got a new day. Amen. I'm telling you what he says about you is what the truth is. What he says about you. And he said this. There, uh, I'll tell you what a field is. A field is a big old parcel of dirt. Big old parcel of dirt. And it says a man found a treasure surrounded by dirt. And he wanted that treasure so bad, it said that treasure brought him so much joy, he went and sold out everything he had, and he bought dirt and all. <laughs> so we could get the treasure. I'm telling you what love does. I, you got dirt around your treasure, sure. <laughs> but he's looking at the treasure. He says you're a treasure. The next one said you, you're valuable pearl. It's talking about you. It's talking about love and, and the object of his affection. Come on. We need to think more of ourselves uh, than what we think of ourselves. We're more valuable than we think we are. We're worth more than we think we are. He thinks more of us than we think he does. I'm telling you, he's head over heels. I mean, it says he don't sleep. I say because he's up all night thinking about me. Amen. You just have to make it personal. You, you think this is disrespectful? I don't know what I don't know what kind of help, but you're gonna to have to have a relationship with God and know how much it is that He loves you and how much He values you and how much you're worth to Him. Because it changes everything. Because you start receiving. See, He said the good things. Good things will bring. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, just adore you. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna I'm just I'm ate up with you. And we say. There's religion in us, and it says, no, 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 not too much now. Fooey. That's Greek for fooey. <laughs> get all you can get. I might yes. need some extra. And you got it. You might need some extra, and I got it. Tell you what the word says about you is the truth. You just don't have to say, you know what? You're gonna have to think more of yourself. I didn't want to talk about you tonight, but he's he said so. You're worth more than you think you're worth. And you're gonna to have to get the the uh, uh, the idea of who you are up to the standard and the level that he says who you are. He says how right. valuable you are. Now you get I mean it's just like coffee. He says that I'm more valuable than he is. Right. Come on, somebody say, I'm valuable. I'm valuable. They say this, I'm more valuable than I think I am. I'm more valuable than I think I am. Mm -hmm. You've heard me tell about the horse, right? I said, if I had a horse for sale over here and I asked $50,000 for him, I ain't never seen no horse for $50,000. You're crazy. I ain't giving no $50,000 for the horse. I can ask whatever I want to, can I? He's my horse. <laughs> Price him however I want, can I? It's my horse. Uh, but the minute somebody comes along and writes a check and they purchase the horse, I'm going to the bank with my money. They can say, that horse ain't worth that. I said, huh. <laughs> I've got proof that he is. You can say whatever you want. The price is no longer negotiable. The value has been established. It's set. It ain't up for negotiation no more. I'm telling you that the price has been made for me. I don't care what it looks like. 
or what it smells like or what it feels like or what you've been through or what you're going to be through. That's right. That's right. Value's been established. And it's time we get our eyes set on what he thinks of us and start lining up with what he says about us and what, who he says we are and start expecting that and allowing him to treat us like that. See, if you don't see yourself in that manner, you won't allow him to treat you that way. Right. You'll block it. He made us. Unknowingly, you'll block it. He said this. Hey, remember, you know what the Bible said? He, he called it, he said, he's the king of kings, right? He's the king of kings. I heard that. Lord of lords, mm -hmm. right? He's the king of who? Who? The king of who? Kings. Who's that? Us. Us. He's the Lord of who? Lords. Lord of lords? Who's that? Us. Hey, Jesus said it like this, in my Father's house. Yeah. Where's the Father's house? I hear this all the time. We think, you know, we've come, we've come to God's house, all that. No, I'm sorry. That's our, our covenant our thing. Body. I, I mean, I'm, it's okay. I understand what you mean, but it's not. This is not God's house. This is a barn. Right, right. You can go to a real church somewhere on Sunday with a steeple, and they say, this is God's house. Our body is sorry. Ours. No, it's not. Right? He lives right here. Amen. Yes. In us. Jesus said this. My father's house are many mansions. I think he's talking about you. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you, you're worth more than you think you're worth. And you got to get a visual of that so you'll start letting him treat you like he thinks you're worth. Quit blocking him. Let Him love you. Let Him love on you. Let Him talk to you. Let Him call you things. When He calls you things, and you allow it, you become what He calls you. <laughs> oh boy. I think I got way off track. Hey, you know, you remember, here's an example for you. And you remember, you know, you know, the Bible called John the disciple that Jesus loved, right? Disciple that Jesus loved. John, he's the one laid on Jesus' bosom and all that. Like the disciple that Jesus loved. Well, if you'll notice that that's written in the book of John. The only disciple that's mentioned at the cross. is the one that allowed God to love him the way that he wanted to love him. The one that said, I'm the one he loves. <laughs> I'm the one he loves. You say it for yourself if you want to, but I'm going on with it. Y'all want to go to me. I, that's why I'm here. You know, I don't know. I'm not a pastor. I don't know what I am. I just decided I wanted just to go, me. and I'm going, and I looked up, and all y'all were following me. <laughs> but I'm going. I'm the cowboy that he loves. <laughs> hey, guess what? When the tough gets going and the smoke, and it, I'm talking about the tough gets going, the devil thinks he's getting the last laugh and the pressure's on. You look up and see, the only ones to be left are those that know yeah. that they're the ones that he loves. Amen. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I got to quit somewhere, I guess. I, just let him, will you? Will you just let him love you? Will you let him treat you like. He wants to treat you. Mm -hmm. Quit blocking it. You, you can title that if you want to. Quit blocking it. That's what I'm telling you. Go on and be valuable. Go on and be what He wants you to be. Go on and let Him call you what He wants you to call you. Quit, quit blocking it. Just, just receive it. Remember we talked about a uh, man and wife and the woman's a receiver and the husband's the lover. He said, husband, love her and she has to receive, right? And then, and then Paul said, I'm really talking about the mystery of the gospel. Same way. Let him be the lover and you receive. Time we get our 
opinion of ourselves and for one another. And, and I hope you're not taking that wrong or hearing that wrong or think that's pride or whatever else. But I'm telling you, it's what he thinks of. I, I, I just want to say, quit it! <laughs> I, mean, I think that's what he's saying. Quit it! Quit downgrading yourself and quit keeping yourself at a level to where you only will receive parts. I want you to have it all. I want yeah. you to walk in health, wealth, victory. I'm talking about everywhere you walk, you got so much of the things of God on you that whatever they need, you got it. That you uh, see, we've thought we've been churching, we've thought operate. See, you think all spiritual gifts and all this stuff. And I believe in all that. We thought, well, let's go to church and we can operate in that stuff so we can show how spiritual we are. I'm telling you, it ain't for church. It's for life. Yes. I got some more, but I better quit. It. I'll just, I'll just, it's the, it's just, can you hear me? Yes. You want to start being receivers? Yes. I want more. Do you want more? Yes. Let's oh, quit yeah. blocking. Want to? Yes. Let's yeah. let him be good to us. You want to? Yes. Let's let him love us. You want to? Yes. I'm not talking about to your level of revelation. I'm talking about to his level of revelation. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Come on. Right. 